Money Monday is brought to you by Anderson Brothers Bank. Until our economy came to a screeching halt earlier this year, many Americans were enjoying some of the lowest unemployment rates, higher salaries, excellent interest rates, and opportunities to save for a rainy day. Then the deluge. COVID-19 put millions into a tailspin, shouldering debt with little to no income to pay it. On this Money Monday, we want to talk about debt resolution and what you should do if you've hit rock bottom. We're happy to be joined by Leslie Tane, a debt resolution attorney for Tane Law Group. It's great to see you. Thank you so much for having me. Great to see you as well. So with or without a pandemic, we all live with debt. That's just something that's a given nowadays. Yes, that's true. We all, everybody has debt. It's a matter of whether your debt is good debt or bad debt, but everybody has some sort of debt. Now, can you tell us uh, some of the clients who walk through your doors uh, on the more severe end of the spectrum, what are some of the most common mistakes that they make? So some of the most common mistakes that many of my clients make is a failure to accurately budget. So not really understanding what monies are coming into the house and then what expenses they have that have to be allocated to those resources. So that is really one of the biggest mistakes is not properly budgeting or not budgeting at all and having no idea about your income and expenses. Yeah, getting into debt is the easy part. Getting out of it can be nearly impossible for some people, which they end up having to take extreme measures, which I'd like to ask you about in a little bit. But maybe you can tell us a little bit about yourself and your line of work. And you've also written a book, Mm -hmm. Life and Debt. So uh, first and foremost, you're a debt resolution attorney. So exactly what do you do as a debt resolution attorney? So what I do as a debt resolution attorney is that I help individuals and small business owners resolve debt with their creditors. Basically what we do is we take a look at their financial health, we come up with a budget, a payment plan, and we renegotiate the debts with their creditors, creating new agreements with the creditors, reducing the balances, and reducing the interest rate to zero so that they have an opportunity to repay the debt in a reasonable amount of time for really less than they owe, but it really allows an opportunity for a lot of breathing room within their budget and also to get caught up on day-to-day expenses that they might find they were starting to slip on and get behind on because they were so overwhelmed with other debts. Well, that sounds like a pretty win-win situation. Um, Have you had any clients come in as a result of the pandemic and some of the financial hardships that they've experienced? Yes, we have had a tremendous amount of clients come to us as a result of the pandemic. First of all, it has been an upheaval in most people's financial situations. Either they've been furloughed or they've lost their positions. There's tremendous amount of unknown or we have clients who can't work because they now have children at home. There's a number of issues that have really come up. So at this point, with pandemic unemployment running out and a lot of the forbearance and deferment programs basically coming to an end through their creditors, they now are faced with uh, you know, basically a fork in the road. What do I do now when I'm not sure what's going to happen with my job and my income? How do I keep up with these bills now? What do I do with my creditors? And I want to hear some of the advice that you have for your clients, but we do need to take a break. I want to talk about that and also your book, Life and Debt, A Fresh Approach to Achieving Financial Wellness. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We've been chatting with Leslie Tain, a debt resolution attorney for Tain Law Group. And on this Money Monday, we want to talk about credit because it's a hole that people sometimes find it very difficult to dig themselves out of. But debt, as you say, Leslie, is something that should be embraced. So I want to talk about your book, uh, Life and Debt. I love the title already, A Fresh Approach to Achieving Financial Wellness. What, What are some of the lessons that you're teaching in this book? So one of the primary lessons is that you can have debt learn to love it and embrace it and actually make it work for you. I'm not a huge proponent of the debt-free life. I think that that is potentially an unachievable goal. So I like to tell people that it's okay to have debt, but it's a matter of what you do with the debt and how you make it work for you so that it benefits you and your life. There are so many things that debt can help you with. Buy a car, get an education, have a home, And those debts are okay, so long as you can pay them and they're manageable within your budget. 
Right. And you were talking earlier about good debt versus bad debt. And of course, I think we know good debt are those things like buying a home and having a car and things like that. Bad debt, of course, credit cards that are maxed out. Uh, people find themselves in that predicament. They don't have enough money coming in to pay it off. So they have nowhere else to turn to but to file bankruptcy. Should they do that or should they find out other options? So good debt can become bad debt when it gets out of control. So you might have the best of intentions when you took on the debt, and that could be your credit card bills. A life circumstance might change that, and then you find yourself in a position where you need to make a decision, how do I get out of this? Bankruptcy is one alternative to resolving debt. There are a couple of types of bankruptcies for the individual consumer. There is also something called a means test where you have to qualify to file for a particular type of bankruptcy. So even though you might want to file bankruptcy, that doesn't mean you're going to qualify. There are, however, other ways to get out of debt that are very effective. Some of them include a debt consolidation plan or debt settlement or other opportunities that might work for you. Truthfully, it's really based on you individually and what's going to make sense for your financial circumstances, your credit, today, tomorrow, and in the future. And what would you say are the five things that people should start with when they're trying to get back on their feet? So the five things that you should start with when you're trying to get back on your feet financially, of course, is the be-all, end-all budget. You have to understand a budget. I understand that budget is a very dirty word for many people. It's not something that you really want to do. It's, it feels like a chore, and it doesn't come very natural to people. But the more you do it, the more comfortable you'll get with it. So if you really want to get back on track financially, you have to understand your budget. So know what, who your creditors are. Many people tell me they don't know who their creditors are and how much debt you have. You should be able to tell me off the top of your head how much debt you basically have, who you owe the money to and how much you have. A lot also, of people can't most do that. <laughs> yeah, most importantly, be able to check your credit. You are entitled to a free credit report at least once a, once a year. I recommend doing that on Halloween when people feel that, you know, that's the scary time. <laughs> so remember <laughs> Halloween as being the time to check your credit. You're entitled to a free credit report. It's not difficult to read or understand. And make sure what you see is what you know you have, the creditors, the balances. And this way, not only are you protecting yourself from fraud, but you're also taking a proactive step in understanding how your score gets to be what it is. And to get and that free credit report, I always push people to annualcreditreport.com. That's the best place to get your free credit report. Yep, annual but credit I report is a great place to get it. You can also get it, as long as you don't have to input a credit card and pay for it, then, then that's a good opportunity to get it. Somebody who's also giving you an organization that's giving you regular reports is a good thing and uh, alerts in case something changes with your credit report. People always ask me, how do I get good credit? Having good credit is really managing debt first. The fifth piece and final piece is really get your debt under control. Make sure that you're not overspending, you're not spending more than you're taking in, and that you are paying your bills on time. I feel like we're just scratching the surface, but we've run out of time. I want to thank you so much, Leslie, for that invaluable advice. You know, people, they, they need to really look hard and good at their debt situation. And it only means when you're dealing with it now, you can move on to a better life in the future. So thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having me today. We're back after this. Money Monday is brought to you by Anderson Brothers Bank.